So we've explored the three key stages of mindfulness and the development of awareness and I felt that that wasn't quite enough and so I put together this iceberg model of compassionate mindful inquiry that looks at the relationship and the interrelationship between mindfulness and compassion. So what I'd like to do now is just to take you through the model so that you have a greater understanding of it and then we can explore uh, it further and um, the inquiry process. So it starts here in the top right hand corner where mindfulness is around, as we know at the beginning, paying attention, coming out of autopilot and tuning into what's happening in the body, heart and mind uh, and the external environment. So what we're doing is we're teaching people how to become more aware, to move from doing mode to being mode through the inquiry process. They do their practice and then the inquiry process helps us to enable them, to teach them how to become more aware as a result of that. So this is always the place to start. Awareness is the key. And once we're aware and we have taught people firstly how to become aware, but also to be aware that they're aware, we need to then uh, help them to develop more skills around that. So this is very much um, where we're switching on their parasympathetic nervous system, perhaps they're using apps, and it's really helpful to be uh, calm and quiet in the moment. But if that's all that they did, they'd then go back to their everyday life and um, the benefits of this would just then be lost. So moving on here to using phrases and questions and inquiring about noticing what happened when they became aware. So becoming um, more articulate and more connected to well, when you notice that you felt that in your body, what happened then? Or what did that feel like to notice that? So we're developing an exploration of exploring beneath the superficial experiences to uh, identify patterns and create new resources which promotes resilience. So moving from simply being aware to noticing what happens when we become aware. And through that noticing, we can start to identify patterns and um, start to see things in more of a truth and reality. Which then leads through to the third, um, which really helps to link how that reality then can, that we see within our practice can then really affect our everyday life. So integrating this awareness and going deeper to create new choices in how to live fully by seeing things as they really are. So I often think of the practice as being a uh, sort of magnifying glass. So within the practice, we see our habitual tendencies, we see what comes up for us, and we can then start to explore that with inquiry and see how those patterns are lived out in our daily life and how perhaps we can make changes within those patterns to enhance our life more fully. So with most mindfulness teaching and inquiry and practice, this is the bulk of what teachers are doing. But for me, that's not enough because what is really important is what happens when you reach that stage. It can often be a place of real vulnerability. So we bring in self-compassion, this wise action so that can incorporate self-soothing, um, gentle uh, self-soothing practices or the words that we use to ourselves to allow the self-criticism to uh, just soften a little bit uh, through an awareness of that and something to do with that. And so this stage is really important. It can be a bit wobbly, but it's a very important phase. And then we lead through to more um, explicit ways of changing habits. So how we can use the compassion skills, the self-soothing, the self-compassion to change habits. So we're testing the water and noticing what happens as we do that. And through doing that all of the time, and in, to some extent linking with to noticing what happens when we do that, over time it can lead to sustainable change. So a new sustained way of living life rises to the surface, impacting on relationships with the self and others. And through doing that and 
improving relationships with ourselves and others. We can then become more mindful of how that uh, really enhances and enriches life and the cycle begins again. So that's why I've developed a cyclical program and a cyclical model which enables us to see that we go round and round it and it's never ending and the more we go round it the more enriching and fulfilling it is.